Disney villains are well known for their devilish personalities and dark motives, and fittingly enough, these evil characters typically meet their end in rather gruesome ways. But which of these deaths are the most gruesome? Which ones got taken out quickly, and which ones were screwed up and agonizing? Hey guys, I'm Brad with Wicked Binge, and today we're taking a grim look at how these Disney villains die. These are Disney villain deaths, least gruesome to most gruesome. You're a fool to challenge me! Now, as far as the rules go, the villains must die. They can't be fake outs or just be left for dead. So that means villains that aren't confirmed to have died or are said to be alive by the directors won't be here. Also, we're only counting actual Disney movie villains, so it's a no for Pixar, Disney TV shows, or TV movie villains. But let us know if we should do those in the future. And finally, only one villain death per movie. All right, let's get started. First up, we have the Fallers. These are villains that died in the most standard Disney way possible, falling to their doom. The bottom of this list has the rat, Radigan. After a battle on Big Ben, he ended up falling off the clock tower to his death. And that's about it. Falling off of a tower is a painful way to go, but really not that flashy or painful. What is painful is that Radigan falling off was due to him thinking that he had won and outsmarted Basil, only to be duped by the very same trap he set up for him. What puts him down this low is that, well, he pretty much died on impact. There wasn't much time for any real pain to set in, and that's gonna be a problem for a lot of these falls. No one fights like Gaston, and nobody falls to their death like Gaston. He meets his end during the fight with Beast. After almost being mauled, Gaston begs for his life, to which the Beast agrees, on the condition that he leave him and Belle alone. Get out. Of course, no one disobeys orders like Gaston, so seeing him hug Belle sets him off and leads to him backstabbing the Beast. This would prove to be a mistake, as thanks to the Beast staggering around in pain, Gaston was accidentally knocked off into the moat below. While this definitely hurts, it's above Radigan for just how less likely for an instant kill, and if that doesn't take, the drowning will. Regardless, there are still plenty of other villains that can die slower than Gaston. For our second to last faller, we have King Runard. While he may be dead before the film started, he did make an impact on the world, namely by creating that damn dam to block the power for the North Ultra people and their magic. He brought his demise upon himself, as he was the one who started the conflict between them and Arendelle, attacking the North Ultra's leader while they were defenseless and starting the war against them. The North Ultra follow magic, which means we can never trust them. While he did die in the war, it wasn't due to a slice of the sword or a gunshot, but by rather, and <laughs> you guessed it, falling to his death. Percival McGleach of the Rescuers Down Under is up next, or rather, down next. After trying to get Cody to be eaten by crocodiles, he ends up falling into the river thanks to Joanna. With him in the river, he's now the one targeted by the crocodiles. However, this does nothing to slow him down, as he just fights them off with his rifle with no bullets. I whooped you! I whooped you! However, this would eventually be for naught, thanks to a waterfall at the end of the river. Despite trying to get out of the river, he ends up going over and falling down. He may have had a brief moment of triumph, placing him lower than others, but it's still a way we wouldn't want to go out on. The next least cruel death goes to Zira, our first villain death from a sequel. The writing was on the wall that she wasn't long for this world, with her threatening to kill Batani, causing her entire pride to essentially give up on her and go join Simba's. Where are you going? Get back here! Alone, she decides to just go with her plan of killing Simba, only for Kiara to fight her, with both of them falling over the cliff. While Kiara is capable of getting herself back up, Zira, not so much. While Kiara was willing to help Zira despite her misdeeds, Zira was like, nah, I'm good. I'll help you. I mean, she did think it over, but she decided that she would rather die than live with Simba. Falling into a river and dying probably isn't that great, but what puts her down this low is that she did it on purpose. It's a choice she was willing to make, and while we're pretty sure that dying hurts pretty badly, this willingness kind of makes her demise pretty grim. Alright, so Scroop from Treasure Planet gives us a little twist on the falling to one's death trope. After trying to send Jim skywards by use of gravity on the ship, he gets caught up in the ship's rope, causing him to be the one sent skywards. That's right, it's another falling death but this time, they're going upwards instead of downwards, 
and it's not just falling onto a surface. He gets launched into space, where he will have to deal with the very painful death of running out of oxygen. He may not have to deal with the impact, but a worse pain is definitely there for him. With his lungs being destroyed by space, he won't be saying hi to Arrow anytime soon. With that, we are now in the more than the fall territory. These villains all perished by falling, but had something else going on that made it all the more painful. Now we have Mother Gothel. What kind of death would be befitting for someone who wanted eternal youth? Well, how about age catching up to her? Thanks to Flynn cutting off Rapunzel's hair to free her from being stuck with Gothel at the cost of his own life, that's exactly what happened. Without Rapunzel's magic hair to keep her young and youthful, she ends up quickly aging and becoming old. In anguish, and thanks to Parcel tripping her, she ends up falling out of a window. However, unlike other villains, she doesn't make it to the ground. Instead, she just vanishes into dust before her body hits the earth, aging so fast that her body became dust. That's right, Flynn Rider turns someone to dust before Thanos made it cool. Next up, we have the evil sorceress, Maleficent. Not including the live-action films, Maleficent is definitely evil through and through, and at the end of the film, definitely dead. Turning into a dragon by using all the powers of hell to fight off Prince Philip, she ends up chasing after him to a cliffside, and just as she was about to finish him off, gets her heart stabbed by the prince, throwing a sword at it. This doesn't deter her, however, as while falling, tries to eat the prince, only for him to call upon the noble art of simply dodging to get out of the way and letting her fall to her death, right into the very same flame she created as her form disappears into a puff of smoke. All that is left of her is just a cloak with the sword stabbing through it. A classic end for a classic villain. We have the original Disney villain death, thanks to the evil queen. It's a tale as old as time for a death as old as time. Sleeping death. <laughs> the evil queen transforms herself into an old hag to trick Snow White into taking a bite out of the poison apple, only to flee once the dwarves come to murder her. During her escape, she spots a giant boulder on the edge of a cliff and tries to unlodge it to crush the dwarves, only for a bolt of lightning to strike her instead, causing her to fall to her doom. Standard Disney villain death affair so far, but then the boulder rolls backwards and falls onto her body instead. If she wasn't dead before, well, she is now. And if that didn't take, then her body being eaten by the vultures, eh, that, that probably did it. That got her death some extra morbid points. If this was a list of iconic deaths, or frankly, awesome death scenes, our winner would have to be Judge Claude Frollo, but we're ranking based on gruesome points. As the self-appointed judge, jury, and executioner of all things involving the religious world, he takes great pride in boosting his own morality over others. These people are traitors and must be made examples of. Even when he's about to kill Esmeralda, as she's trying to save Quasimodo, he boasts about how God is going to see them as guilty of sin and corruption. Well, it looks like the big man upstairs heard that and decided to let Satan take charge of his fate. And Satan decided to take Frollo's words of, and he shall smite the wicked and plunge them into the fiery pit, to heart. The gargoyle Frollo was standing unbroke as he uttered those words, dropping a terrified Frollo along with himself into the fiery pits below. A nice combination of falling and burning to death. On to the living pipe organ, Maestro Forte. Given that he is, well, you know, stuck upright by chains, it looks like he's pretty safe from falling to death. I'm bolted to the wall! But no, not at all. After getting tipped off from Fife that in order to stop Forte, you need to destroy the keyboard, the beast channels the rage of every gamer losing a match of Fortnite and smashes the keyboard, ripping it off the pipe organ. Keep in mind that Forte is that pipe organ, and if he was human, this would be the equivalent of the beast tearing at his stomach. Angry that his friends, at least a friend in his eyes, would betray him, Forte manages to free himself from the wall, no longer being stuck there. However, this leads to him just falling to his death instead, toppling over and dropping onto the floor, messing up more of his parts and permanently getting destroyed. Our next villain to fall is Morgana from The Little Mermaid 2. Stop criticizing me! Now, given how Ursula's crazy sister is stuck out in the sea for most of the time, trying to fall in the ocean is definitely harder than normal. But is there a way to do it? Well, yes. And in Morgana's case, she experiences one of these deaths. 
With Triton angry at her, he decides to cast her off into the depths of the sea by use of a small iceberg, trapping her in ice and letting it sink to the bottom of the ocean. People have tried to preserve their bodies in ice to hopefully revive themselves in the future. Needless to say, the bottom of the ocean isn't one of these places. With her last thoughts being that she failed to impress her mother, she definitely isn't long for this world. Triton's claim of her not being able to harm his family again looks pretty sound to me. Now, before we move into the next section, full disclosure, there is one more falling death that we haven't listed yet, strictly because we felt that it's one of the most gruesome deaths there is. But we'll get to that last one later. That said, finally, we have the most cruel ways of dying. These are demises that make the sweet instant release of death that comes from falling seem desirable. We're now at the cruel deaths. Our first entry is Sean Yu. Now, the writers were trying to avoid yet another death by falling, so it looks like you're out of ideas. What was their solution? One of the most pretty deaths someone can go out with. Fireworks! Launching a rocket at him, Sean Yu is taken for a short ride before he and the rocket crashes into the tower filled with fireworks. You do the math about what happens next. If your answer was explodes and puts on a brief light show for everyone, well, you would be right. Still, a pretty quick death, but a lot more fiery. Next is the villain from Oliver and Company, Sykes. Not to psych you out or anything. <laughs> Uh, despite being only human, he still looks imposing and threatening, but not even a powerful looking human like him can match a speeding train. Being too distracted by fighting the animals in his car, he doesn't notice all the warning signs of an oncoming train. When he finally sees the speeding train coming at him, it's too late to change course, and all he could do was scream as he collided head on with the train. His car and himself were set ablaze as he was knocked off into the river, or at least what was left of him. Despite just how painful it looked, it was also incredibly short, meaning that his pain, being very painful and very noticeable, was still cut short, and he was at least granted a quick death. Jafar's death is next. He may have escaped death from his first outing, but here, he isn't so lucky. While he was trapped in a genie lamp as a genie in the first film, in the sequel, he gets out and is ready to start his rampage and revenge against those that triumphed over him. You will take the lamp there for me. However, it would be his closest ally, Iago, that he had to worry about. After boasting how his lamp will never get destroyed, Iago comes in to save the day by kicking the lamp off and into a lava pit. This is enough to destroy Jafar, as he ends up not only getting electrocuted, but also exploding into a cloud of dust. While it definitely looks painful, he himself was never attacked during the fight, as the lamp being destroyed was the only way he truly could have died. But also, it could have been worse, hence why we can't rank it any higher. Now we're looking at how King Candy, aka Turbo, got himself a game over. Being in another game means that respawning after death just is impossible. Very much aware of this, he tries to take over and destroy the world of Sugar Rush by using cybugs that escaped from Hero's duty after being turned into a bug himself. Ralph, however, willing to sacrifice himself, creates a giant beacon of light from a Mentos soda volcano to draw all the bugs toward it. The problem for Turbo is that he's part of that group, now being part cybug. His King Candy side wants to fly into the light as Turbo wishes to escape. Why are you going into the light? As his King Candy side triumphs, he alternates between being in awe at the light and just crying out in pain, realizing his inevitable fate. Knowing that you're gonna die and that there's nothing you can do to stop it is pretty horrific. The death was instant, so not at all that painful. But the psychological pain, however, was through the roof. If Morgana's death looked tame, then don't worry. Ursula is here to show everyone what a proper death is. Despite having Triton's trident, she's still very much vulnerable, as Prince Eric realizes. Taking control of the ship, he managed to make his way through a whirlpool, ramming the bow of the ship straight through her stomach, drawing blood. That would hurt anyone, but it gets even worse when she gets zapped by lightning by the ship's broken bow, and considering that she's submerged in water, that's probably pretty painful. To further rub it in, her death meant that all her malicious magic was undone, freeing everyone that she had under her magic. A dramatic death that shows that the bigger you are, the harder you fall. Our next entry belongs to the lion, Scar. And first fun fact, the way that Scar dies was originally planned for Gaston, but was cut for being too graphic and gruesome. 
and seeing how it played out, we can see why. After losing to Simba in the fight for Pride Rock and failing to claw Simba to death, he gets tossed off and falls to the ground from the top of the rock, but doesn't die. Already a painful experience, and add in that everything's on fire, it somehow gets worse. His true death is at the hands of the hyenas, the very same ones that he used as an army. I thought he said we were the enemy. Here, however, after hearing Scar trying to pass the blame for Mufasa's death onto them, they decide to return the favor. By that, we mean ganging up on him and ripping and biting into him. We get to see the slaughter through a shadow on the rock, and it looks just as disturbing as it sounds. With his former allies finishing the deed and somehow not caring that they're gonna burn, Scar's death definitely warrants him a spot this high. He probably should have been prepared for that, huh? For a true nightmare of a death, we head off to Halloween Town to see how Oogie Boogie is done in. If this guy bugs you, well, it's because he's actually made out of bugs. He just hides it well by wearing a sack to cover them all. He takes great joy in gambling with other people's lives, but what happens when he loses his own? Looks like I won the jackpot! Well, it's simple. Thanks to Jack Skellington unraveling him, he ends up losing a sack, which isn't, it, it isn't what it sounds like and all the bugs he had inside start to drop away from him and fall out, dripping into a pool of lava. However, while one bug does survive, Santa Claus takes care of that by stomping on the final bug. He looks gross, but this could be taken in two ways. One is that Jack just tore off his skin, and what is basically his blood is gradually dripping away from him as he perishes. And the second one is that each bug is just one of his many conscious thoughts, meaning that he dies each time a bug is killed. Whichever one is worse is up to you. What matters here is that both ways are pretty gruesome and disturbing, earning him a spot this high. For our top five, we got our last sequel villain's death, Saluk. While Dead looked like he fell for the most classic villain death in a Disney movie, he comes back and manages to one-up himself. After forcing Kazim, his former partner in thievery, to take him to the hand of Midas, he ends up greedily demanding it. When Kazim throws it to him by the handle, he catches it by the hand itself. A big mistake. The hand of Midas is mine! The hand uses its powers to turn him into gold before toppling over and falling into the sea. He may have fallen like he did before, but being turned to gold and realizing his fate definitely has to count for some sort of pain. Saluk ends up here due to the psychological horror of becoming gold and physical pain such a transition requires. He may not have gotten the gold in terms of the most painful death, but he did turn into gold. That counts for something, I think. Entering our top five, we have Lyle Tiberius Rourke from Atlantis, a movie that is just as forgotten by Disney as the city it's based on. We just can't forget how disturbing Rourke's death is. You just won the solid gold Cupid doll. With his sanity deteriorating through the climax, Rourke decides to end Milo by use of a fire axe, breaking the heart of Atlantis. With the crystal fragments all around him, Milo decides to take a piece and cut through Rourke. While he didn't kill him, he did something worse, turning Rourke's body into a crystal instead. Even during his last-ditch effort to kill Milo, he ends up getting shattered by the blades of the blimp, cutting him into pieces. What puts him above Saluk is that while he was turned to gold and pretty much died after the transformation, Rourke was still in control enough to try and force Milo to join him in the great beyond. He could have just died after being turned to crystal, but going the extra mile like this earns him a few more brutal points, putting him just outside our final competitors. Our fourth most gruesome death belongs to the Horn King. Now, we aren't gonna sugarcoat it. He was already a pretty disturbing and disgusting villain, so just how can he be even more gross? How about if we see his flesh get ripped from his body as he's just left with a skeleton before exploding? Sounds violent, doesn't it? After being pushed into the Black Cauldron's pool by Torin, he ends up trying to escape, physically struggling and trying to avoid his fate. However, being forced to grab a hold on it, he ends up succumbing to it, his skin being pulled off his form as he's just left with this skeletal form. If that wasn't enough, said skeleton explodes thanks to the cauldron. He's gone. <laughs> He's gone. You may be noticing another pattern with these deaths that don't involve falling. And just in case he somehow survives, the castle falling over and onto him would do the trick. Just goes to show you that you can always look and die in worse ways than you may think. All right, I'd argue that this next one is one of the darkest Disney deaths of all time. And that is the death of Clayton. I think this one will be better off stuffed. 
And yeah, this was the death we were talking about before. As a threat to Tarzan, it's the standard affair of man versus nature, with him being man in this case, and losing as well. On his rage to kill Tarzan, he finds Tarzan fleeing through some vines, while Clayton ends up getting stuck. Now, he is already stuck above a giant gap between him and the ground, which is his clue to tell him that maybe he should stop. However, he keeps going, slashing at the vines to try to free himself, despite Tarzan warning him to stop, and even trying to reach out to save him. The vine that was holding him up, falling, he falls as well. However, he doesn't quite make it to the ground. The only other vine around Clayton wraps around his neck, and before he could reach the ground, snags him and causes Clayton to accidentally hang himself. You can even see a shadow during the lightning strike if you keep a keen eye out. We decided to rank this one bronze because it was just an incredibly grim demise. Even with Tarzan attempting to help in his final moment, Clayton's anger is what does him in, and we're left with arguably the most morbid shot in Disney history. The bloodied silver medal goes to the witch doctor, Dr. Facilier. There isn't any other way of saying this. This man flat out gets dragged to hell, or in this case, the other side, thanks to Tiana using her frog tongue to snatch the talisman, the source of his powers, and breaking it. Without his powers, his friends from the other side descend upon him and open up a portal to their world dragging him through it. The last we see of him is him begging and pleading for them to let him go, but to no effect. I just need a little more time. It may look like he's alive, but considering how the portal changed to that of his screaming face, he's not only confirmed to be dead, but with him also being scared of his friends on the other side, he's definitely not having a good time. If he's still alive, he'll be at least wishing for death. At the very top of the chart, we have the ruler of the underworld, Hades. Now, we'll admit that we are bending the rules here a bit, as Hades doesn't really die, being a god and all that. However, that just makes it even more disturbing in our eyes. For these other villains, they do eventually get an end to their suffering, with the possible exception of our last entry, Dr. Facilier. Hades doesn't get such a luxury. After being knocked into the river Styx by Hercules, he ends up getting sucked down into the river for all eternity, with nothing but the voices surrounding him from the souls of the river. With all of this while being dragged deeper and deeper down into the depths of the river, it looks like he isn't leaving anytime soon. Panic and Pain don't even think he's coming back. You mean if he gets out of there? If. It's ironic, really. The most disturbing Disney villain death is the one where they fall to their own doom. What was once just nothing more than a silly joke is now the most violent way to die, or in this case, never die, or escape from. With that, now this video's at its end. Did we miss a death or two? Or is there another death that you think is better or worse? Don't forget to hit that notification bell and binge our Good to Evil playlist, where we break down the morality of the characters in your favorite cartoons, shows, and movies. But most importantly, stay wicked.